So, so, a, sh a chef at a hospital wants our stuff. But he wants it on a U.S. Foods dis uh, delivery truck, along with everything else. You know, one check, a simple accounting, blah, 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 okay? Well, his insurance underwriters are demanding that the only food that he serves is product liability insured. Okay? So, U.S. Foods comes to us and says, we have a client, a hospital, that wants your chicken or your beef or whatever. Um, you need $4 million worth of product liability insurance. So we call up every underwriter, and their question is, are you GAP certified? Now, GAP stands for Good Agricultural Practice. And we say, well, no, we're not GAP certified. Well, in order for us to give you product liability insurance, you have to be GAP certified. Well, how do you get GAP certified? Well, you have to adhere to the best management practices protocols that are written by the land-grant universities. The land-grant universities, of course, collude with Monsanto and Cargill and Tyson and Smithfield to create best agricultural practice or, or, or good agricultural practice um, uh, gaps certification. They go play golf with the insurance executives so they all agree this is the food that we're going to allow to be eaten in America. The, the critical thing I want you to understand here is this is not government. This is completely private sector where the government gets involved is in, in, in the whole licensing procedure and administering the food safety laws and inspecting restaurants and, and they come in and ask is that GAP certified and so from insurance from product liability and from, from federal uh, from government food police you have a collusion a fraternity of ideas to, to create to, to write a protocol a food a farming production protocol that, that is extremely um, antithetical to everything we do here. Their protocol for waste management, for example, is manure slurry lagoons, not compost. Their protocol for poultry is environmentally controlled Tyson houses, not chickens that can commiserate with red-winged blackbirds and indigo buntings and take our diseases to the scientific houses. Their protocol, and, and so they have they have protocols for all of these things, including you know vaccinations, disease protocols, and so somebody like us, for example, who who when when we're line breeding, trying to breed up pig or cow or chicken or rabbit genetics, and we let animals die as part of a culling procedure to show us what's weak, so we don't mask genetic weaknesses through an arbitrary vaccination program, that's considered animal abuse and and, 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 um, and and Russian roulette with disease by both the animal rights and the um, and the insurance underwriters and the food police. And so there's this, this massive collusion of orthodoxy that is extremely prejudicial to all wise traditions, heritage, indigenous type of models so that these will only be preserved in a museum setting on a reservation the Indians can't run free. And that's where we are. And that's why we need Farm to Consume Legal Defense Fund. And that's Great. why all of us... Amen. That's why all of us, if we, if we are concerned at all, about what our grandchildren are going to have the freedom to eat, we need to get behind this effort because it's probably doing more to maintain our grandchildren's uh, food choice than any other thing in the world right now. And I, I get teary talking. I mean, that, that's that's how powerful this is. So I thank all of you for being involved with it, for being aware of it, for understanding what's going on. And, um, and being a part of this, this, this finger in the dike, and especially the legal team, Gary and Pete, uh, and these guys.
guys that, that are out in the trenches. We're not winning everything. Wish we would, uh, but 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 at least at least we're giving the uh, the orthodoxy, the inquisitors. At least now, those of us that go into the rack are represented by someone, and that is such a blessing. I can't even tell you what a burden, what a load that takes off of those of us that are out here pushing the. Uh, you know, pushing the food police and these protocols out here in, in the movement.